Okay, great. All right. Hey, everybody. Welcome to another great edition of the Frankie Slauson Show. And it's interview time once again. And uh, I have with me a guy who has made a legend of himself for what he has done over the over the last few decades, I'd say. Uh, he is a known actor as well as a martial arts expert. And just an all-around good guy that uh, is also a preacher. And uh, his name is Mel Novak. Welcome to the show, Mel. Well, thank you for having me, Sean. Yeah, and uh, yeah, I I do appreciate uh, you spending some time with me. It means a lot. Oh well, yeah, yeah. It's uh, it's always a pleasure to just share and, and be on where we can talk about uh, the thing. Yeah, they they call me a good guy, but in the movies, I always play the bad guy. <laughs> that's why I that's why I said that as an introduction. It's it's the opposite kind. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, it's fun. I, I enjoy playing the bad guys. And uh, in, in real life, I go into uh, some real hardcore penitentiaries, and most of them seen the movies that I've done playing one of them, and in their mindset, I'm one of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yesterday I was in a real hardcore place, and uh, how sad it is, Sean, that people make choices where their life is gone. Yeah. 96 years, 150 years. He, it's just, uh, it's just sad because life is short the way it is. But to, to jeopardize, you know, there, there one guy in Florida had 999 years and a nine nine day sentence. Could you imagine waking up in the morning? <laughs> I can't imagine that. I mean, that's just that's just uh, strange. They they like the fact that I played I played one of them, the villain. But I tell them, hey, I just shot three people in this movie I'm working on now called the vigilante priest I said, but I went oh, I put my home took my makeup off because they were blanks yeah so you guys use the real stuff and here you are <laughs> well what, so, t- what what kind of message do you try to give to the the people who are who are in jail or prisons like when you go out and, and preach to them I bring a message of hope and I I, I, did, I use all everything that's in the Bible and I use probably 100, 120 scriptures in every every message to encourage, edify, and uplift. And uh, it, it's amazing, uh, like there's been a revival in the prison since January. I mean, I've been getting like 97% who are converting to Christianity. And uh, that never happened in 29 years. You know, June is my 29 year, 29 year anniversary in prisons. And uh, and Easter was my 32th anniversary on Skid Row. These are all broken people, and uh, it, it just, uh, sometimes it gets you really, really down. But, uh, yeah, I've been all over the country, uh, penitentiaries in Rawway, New Jersey, Eastern and Western Pennsylvania, uh, Florida, Alabama, Texas, New Mexico, Arizona, Nevada, Washington, Oregon, you know, New York, uh, everywhere you go, it's packed. Oh yeah, like, you know we we, we talk about choices. choices. Oh yeah, yes. Well, yeah. I mean, cho- you know, you got to make good choices to to you know try to have a good life and stuff. But sometimes people just don't get that. It, they don't understand the meaning no. to that. No, they get all the gangs. You know, our family structure in our country is is almost nil, and so these guys when they're young. They go somewhere they're going to be accepted. Everybody needs acceptance. And that's where the trouble starts. Yeah. So, uh. But, you know, I, I have a flyer that I give out showing, like, about uh, eight, eight movies that I did with, uh, you know, Yul Brenner and Bruce Lee and whatnot with my testimony. And that really opens up the dialogue with them. Oh, sure. And, uh, I get favor in there because I have to sign a favor if I'm taking hostage. They don't make deals, uh-huh. and uh, and they know it's like there's one game banger. I, I had a service at the LA County Jail, the worst jail in the country, and he says, "Hey, Chaplin, you do all these movies?" I says, "Yeah." He says, "You know karate?" Yeah, and I went real loud. Yeah, and I use it if I have to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
<laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, but, but that's, that's kind of interesting, though. I mean, it's, it's good that you do stuff like that, you know, it's because, you know, there aren't many people out there that will actually go to, to prisons and, and try to spread the good word and stuff. Yeah, it's good, Rose. Uh, population triple down there. Last year, we had an epidemic of tuberculosis. Oh, jeez. So, it, it, yeah, it's, it's just amazing. Uh, in every prison, they have hepatitis, TB, staph, MRSA, and pink eye. So you got to really, really be careful, you know, in those places. I should have brought stock in that, you know, when you put that stuff on your hands to kill the germs. Yeah. <laughs> I should have I brought stock in that one. Because <laughs> I use it so much. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, I suppose, you know, it's a different different type of world nowadays than it used to be. But uh, uh, going back to, like, like what got you kind of motivated, like, when you were a kid that you wanted to be involved either with the preaching or just involved with acting alone? Well, it, it really, I never thought about it. All I wanted to do when I was growing up was to play pro baseball. And I ended up signing with the Pittsburgh Pirates. And then I had um, I had 60 scholarships in football all over the country, major universities, full ride. And I never got hurt in football, Then I had a massive rotator cuff tear, but a cripple, I was crippled for five years. Oh, I was like a gimp. And I just, I had to leave that area because people kept saying, you should have gone, you should have gone to college, you could have played pro, pro football, look at you now, you're a cripple. I said, you know, before I really hurt somebody, I better just leave it. And I, and I came to California, and I just, I got a job at an insurance company, and this gal said, you're really low, good in clothes. My, my cousin's a modeling engagement. Would you like to go, go meet her? And so I met her, so I started modeling, and then I went, started going to acting schools, and finally, little by little, I started getting to, uh, roles, and uh, the first really big role in the movie was Black Belt Jones. And I played a hitman named Blue Eyes, and I did my own fights and stunts. And I always hung out with the with the stunt people. And Robert Klaus, who directed it, really, really liked what I did, and, and the fact that I did my fights it was easier in the editing room rather than you know, someone that they call cut and then they put a stunt man to do your fight. And he took me to Hong Kong. Oh. That's that's where I did. The Game of Death. It seemed like everybody in, in, on this planet has seen The Game of Death. I played Stick the Assassin. And the fight I did in there from 8 at night till 8 in the morning, where they had the rain machine on, that was a tough night. But uh, he was really pleased with it. I had I did four movies for him. One with Joel Brenner, The Ultimate Warrior, and uh, Max von Cito. So it, it wasn't a plan but with circumstances that were difficult. Uh, you know, I went from a world-class athlete to a cripple, and 99% turned to drugs or alcohol, and I never drank, I never did drugs. I was around drugs in Hollywood all the time. You know, you could go to parties and have bowlfuls of cocaine, I never messed with any of that stuff. And I end up at the Union Rescue Mission 32 years ago, I was a guest celebrity. And I had, by then I had miracles, you know, they were going to amputate my leg, I was going to die, my mother wouldn't let them. You know, after 12 hours, it was a miracle, I, I had my leg, and then I had surgery on my throat 10 times in 10 years, from 18 to 28. So they, I was encouraging these people, they're down the street, Sean, I mean, have nothing, everything can get gone. And you talk about brokenness, you talk about people who, mentally and emotionally crippled. So the CEO was watching me, and that's where I started. So he said, you know, please come and do a service. So I started there, and then a, then a L.A. mission, and then there was a uh, a guy who just came out of L.A. County Jail who heard me, and he called the, the chaplain over there who had spent time in San Quentin, and he was uh, just a Bruce Lee fanatic. Oh, yeah. So I ended up ministering there, and then we went we back to York, Pennsylvania. It blossomed, and uh, I did up maybe. And 
mean, I, I've also done probably 12, 12 movies in, during that time, 13 movies. So it works out good, and a lot of times, you know, especially on low-budget films, they work around my schedule. And, uh, you know, like Vampire Assassin, I had a great role in that. Ron, Ron Hall, who is a stunt coordinator in four different movies, he's a karate guy, he wrote, produced, and directed it. And uh, uh, Lionsgate made two and a half million on DVD sales, and we got aced. Oh, that's, that's that's how a lot of people are in that business, boy. You, you know, when you have a contract, because then you got to go spend thirty or thirty-five thousand or forty thousand to get into the books, and it's not worth it. But, I, uh, that's how it all. That's how it all started. It started snowballing, uh, and generally, it's it playing the villains. Oh, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that that's kind of neat, though. I mean, it's like uh, to to be able to 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 have a. A start like that because from what uh, from what I've learned from you, you 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 got to uh, be in movies with a lot of different famous people. I know you you mentioned a few of them yeah. already. Uh, what was it like working with like Chuck Norris? I'm sure that was an experience for you. Yeah, I worked I worked a couple of times with him, and uh, in fact, I packaged Eye for an Eye, and uh, so that was uh, that was good for me there. But you know. Like Steve McQueen for me was was all time great person and Mr. Cool. He liked me because he spent some time in juvenile when he was a kid, and he knew I wasn't what you call Hollywood. Cause he he didn't really like people who were you know thought they they were hot stuff and they're Hollywood and whatnot. And then uh, when he got that cancer, and I, I was ministering to him and. Had he had he lived, I'd have been in every picture that he did. Cause he told me he really liked me, oh, wow. but he liked me as a person. And uh, see, a lot of people won't won't go to Skid Row. Like during the Christmas or something, you'll see celebrities down there, and they're looking for the camera. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and I'm there all the time. I was there today. Uh, I mean, I, I'm down at Skid Row probably uh, not seven, eight, nine times a month plus the prisons and stuff and so I, I work it out where I could do all this stuff and you know between Monday Tuesday and today and then at 6 o'clock I'll be on Omega and then it's like nine nine different things that I, I was doing and, and I was like whoa today I was a little wiped out so I take a lot of vitamins I take like 50 to 70 herbs and vitamins a day and uh a lot of bees, you know, bee complex, B12, and all those things. So, but, you know, the thing is that I didn't mess my body up with drugs or alcohol. I always exercise, playing ball, and doing things. And that'll keep you around for a while. Oh, yeah. That's, that's, yeah. that's definitely a fact. Uh, any, anytime you can keep your body, you know, you know, in some type of shape. <laughs> I wish I wish yeah, a lot more I people play, were like that. Yeah, well, that. When I played pro ball, I was like 185, and I'm like 187 now. <laughs> okay, well, 188, two, something like that. So two pound that's, difference. That's, yeah, because I have a lot of uh, custom suits, so I can't afford to be away <laughs> anyway. <laughs> when I go out to the prisons, I wear these. Uh, I have a lot of suits, like gangster suits, and two tons of blue and white, black and white, brown and white. The black brothers in the prison age said, mm-hmm. <laughs> now that brother's down. <laughs> it's really, really funny. On uh, Monday, I go off the wayside, and i got to walk through four gates. Oh, jeez. And th- you've got all those inmates standing out there for count. And you should hear some of the comments, because I, I really dress up when I go into the prisons. I don't do that in Skid Row. Like today, I had denims on and a you know, sweater and a shirt and uh, blue, blue uh, tennis shoes. And, but... When I do, when I go to prisons and stuff, I mean, I'm down. And I'm uh, here as God's ambassador. Well, yeah, uh, they probably treat you know they they well just like you said you know they probably treat you pretty pretty well. Just the fact that boy, this guy really uh, he's pretty spiffy for coming to a prison. Yeah, <laughs> and you know what? It encourages them to say, "Man, you did all these movies, you did this, and you came in to spend time with us and, and try to help us." 
and they know that. You know, I get favor in there, and I've been to a lot of places that are very dangerous. I mean, a lot of things happen. I've been in the middle of a riot, and uh, I see people get stabbed. But you know what, Sean? Everybody needs love. Everybody needs to know that, hey, you screwed up, it doesn't make you a failure. And all my messages are very, very encouraging, and it's all predicated on, 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 the, on the cross of Calvary, you know, with the Lord Jesus. And uh, it, it's amazing. It's like the other night at my Bible study, I had my, my friend Brady, I call him my friend. I led him to, to the Lord up in Pelican Bay. That's the worst one in the country. It's up in Crescent City. I've been there eight times, <laughs> going back in September. They're having a couple of riots up there right now. Your chaplain just sent me a letter. <laughs> <laughs> and it's an adventure. And sometimes, you know, you, you get a rush. Like yesterday, I went into the High Power Supermax. And these guys, are, it's amazing. They're in this little cell, little tin sink, tin toilet, and a cot. And, and the, the mattress is about an inch thick, inch and a half thick. That's it. Uh, yeah uh, well do you ever worry like I suppose I suppose when you go to these prisons you don't go by yourself I'm sure you have some type of security with you don't you no no there's when I do my services there's no deputies in there it's me and the inmates and uh wherever I go and to answer your question it has nothing to do with matcha it has to do with my faith in God I've never ever been afraid or anxious never and I've been doing this a long time. And they know that, because they can smell fear on, on people. And, and some people, they get they get shook when, when they get around them. But you know, they it's like they think I'm an old friend because, hey, I saw you, I saw you shoot this guy in this movie. I saw you, but the thing is, they know I'm there for, for a purpose. There's no paycheck, Sean. Yeah. There's no, no paycheck. Keep the Lord prison ministry. God always takes care of my needs. I have more than I could even think of. I mean, it's amazing. I, I put out a newsletter once a month, and when I do that, uh, Ubiga Man radio show goes all over the world. I get donations from people. I have no idea who they are, but that arsenal prayer that I have on my website, uh, I've given probably you know with with everything, all kind of things. Uh, like Spanish and English, 120,000, 125,000. And it's helping people. And the hard thing is, like yesterday I got a call by a dear, dear, dear friend of mine. His wife called crying. He got lymphoma. He, he doesn't have much time to live. And this chaplain over at the, the juvenile, you know, she's, she's not even 50. And she got, uh, oh, what did they say, a lymph node, lymph node cancer. Oh, jeez. So I, I get all these calls, and it, it just tears you up. And uh, I can't, I can't just leave it there. Like when I'm working on a movie, that day of shooting, I leave it there, and I'm going to work on the next because I'm all, I work really hard to develop the character, and I don't care. What I get paid, I'm going to give them a uh, million dollars worth of, of my time and effort and, and talent. And uh, but you know, it's, it's just so many, so many people now are struck down with with, with cancers and things. That's all people. You got your health, you got wealth. Yeah. And don't take it for granted. I told those inmates yesterday. Hey, if you can see, walk, talk, and hear, go to bathroom both ways. Don't take it for granted. Yeah, well, I, I, had, sp- prostate, I had prostate cancer, uh, and it, it took seven years. But God healed it. I didn't. I didn't do all that other stuff people do. I won't. I wouldn't do chemo if you had a machine gun in my mouth. Oh yeah, I've heard. I've heard. Uh, I've heard the negative things about radiation. That's for sure. Yeah, radiation too. Right, but. Uh, so, you know, it's a thing of, when I'm working, I'm really enjoying it uh, on the film. I, 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 I really do enjoy it. And then when I'm, 
working with the skid row and prisons, that's another thing. And no matter what parts fall by the wayside, I don't let it get me down because I see people in life that are, are, are just totally uh, have nothing. Yeah. So, yeah. Oh, that's that's true. Well, hey, I want to say thank you, uh, Mel, for letting me do this little interview with you. And uh, you oh, really, sure. you really doing this? Anytime. Yeah. You know, you... My, this is my cell number, so you're welcome. To call me anytime you want. And uh, I hope you get to see some of the films. Did Joe send you a couple of the DVDs? Oh, yeah. Yeah, he sent me a few films, yeah. and I, I've seen a few of them already. And, uh, yeah. you know, I definitely will be uh, watching more of them, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, good. Well, okay, and uh, thank you for having me. And God bless you. Yes, and thanks for being on the show. Bye bye. And that was legendary actor Mel Novak. And I hope you guys enjoyed hearing the story of what he what he does as a as a preacher. And uh, you know, it, it's kind of nice to find people like him because you know he doesn't have to be doing this type of stuff at all, but he chooses to because he believes it's the right thing to do. And uh, and, there, and there should be more people like that that should just do stuff you know that doesn't always include money. So anyway. I want to say thank you to Mel and thank you to uh, Joe, my agent, for hooking me up with this interview with Mel. And, uh, and we'll, we'll be right back with some more of the Frankie Slauson Show with the old Reb and Frankie right here on KTech. <laughs> 